Hi guys and welcome back. Now imagine this. Imagine that the spectator simply thinks of a card. He won't even remove it from the deck, he just thinks about it. And he shuffles the cards up and you still is able to locate his selection. I mean, that sounds too good to be true, right? But I'll show you a way to do it right now in this video. So this is another truly great trick from the Royal Road to Card Magic. Let's get right into it. Okay, as I said, the deck is shuffled completely. This can be a borrowed deck, just like this. Now you ask your spectator to cut the deck into three piles, just like this. Now, he gets to pick from any of these piles. So let's say he picks the middle one. And he looks through the cards. So the spectator looks through the cards and he picks one card to think of. To make it easy, let's pick this card, the Ace of Spades, just like that. So he remembers the Ace of Spades, and now he gets to shuffle the cards up, just like this. And now I, the performer, says, I get a great feeling about the number 12. Now I want you to deal the cards face up right here and remember on which position your card falls. But I will turn my back, so I won't even see the cards, okay? So start dealing and I turn my back. So the spectator deals like this. Okay, and it turns that pack over. Okay, now I ask him, did it fall on the number 12? And he goes, no. And you go, hmm. Okay, let's try something else. Okay, so you already shuffled the middle pile. Now shuffle these two together as much as you want. And then shuffle or place that in the middle of those piles. So the, the piles are cut and shuffled and all of that. Now, you take, the performer takes the deck from the spectator and you say, hmm, looks like you really shuffled all, all of these cards really well. Really good. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't a number 12, you said. And they go, no. And you say, hmm, okay. Um, so on which location did it fall? And they go, 18. It fell on the 18th card. And you go, okay, I'll try to locate the card. I'll see if I can get a feeling for which is your card. Hmm. No, no, hmm. 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 I got, I got a great feeling about yeah, this card. I think this is your card. So what was your card? The Ace of Spades. And yeah, that's the Ace of Spades. Okay, so that's a great little trick. And uh, let's get right into how it's done. Now before starting, I just want to remind you all that when we hit a thousand subscribers, we will do a giveaway and a super, super cool card trick. So make sure to subscribe for that. Now let's get into the tutorial. Okay guys, I hope you liked that performance. This is another great trick from this book, The Royal Road to Card Magic. We're going through this entire book right now on this channel. This is one of the best books for beginners, but experts love it too, mainly because it's packed with these simply great little principles that you will use throughout your career as a magician or just a person who likes to do tricks, you know. And uh, this trick is called The Three Piles and it's on page uh, 71 in the book if you want to follow along in your own book. This underlying principle is used in so many great tricks. Okay, so as I said, the deck can be shuffled and cut genuinely. You can do this with a borrowed deck as well, you know. And what you're going to do is you're going to ask the spectator to cut the deck into three piles, just like this, okay? And then they get to pick any pile they want. Now, just to make it a bit easier to follow, let's say the Ace of Spades is in this pile uh, and they choose to think about that. And now they can really shuffle that pile in which that card is, like that. And now 
this is our key card and the key card is the card that happens to land on top after they are done shuffling. So let's say the Queen of Hearts is on top. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to say a random number. This is what they recommend in the book. You say, mm, I have a great feeling about the number 12. So I want you to deal the cards face up on the, on the table. And I want you to see what position your card falls at. Okay. And okay. So this is what you're going to do now. You're going to say that, and, and I'll turn my back so I won't see the cards. But you make sure to see only the first card, and then you really turn your back. And now you make sure to remember that card, the Queen of, of Hearts in this case. And they keep dealing, so that's one, two, three, four, five, okay? So their card is on position number five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten and so on. And yeah, you don't know, of course, that it's on position five, only they know that by now. And once they've done that, they can turn this over. And now you can kind of go, okay, are you done with all that? Can I turn around so that they really think that you've been having your, your back turned all the time? And they say yes. And you ask them to take these two and shuffle them together because they already shuffled this one, right? And then they can cut these cards, they can place this packet in the middle, and that goes on top. And now you go, okay, I had a great feeling about the number 12. Is that where your card fell? And they go, no, no. And you go, oh, okay, hmm, I thought so. Uh, so what was the position? You say this kind of casually. And they go, yeah, it was uh, five. Okay, and what you're going to do now is you're going to take the deck and you're going to look through it and you go, hmm, you seem to shuffle it well, or hmm, maybe I didn't take out the jokers, you know, come up with a reason. You always need a reason to look through the cards. Now what you're doing is you're looking for your key card. And in this case, yeah, it's the Queen of Hearts. And now you're going to count five cards uh, below, basically five cards to the right. So you go one, two, three, four, five, and you're going to cut at that point. So you're going to bring you're going to bring your key card to the sixth position from the bottom. You have you're going to have multiple outs depending on which position uh, they say. So if they say it was five, which it is in this case, you have cut your card down here. Okay, and I'll explain all the different possibilities in just a moment. But in this case, if it's on position one to five, I like to think about it as taking, you know, going six minus their position. Six minus five, that would be one. That means that you know that there is one card on the face and then comes their card. So it's one card and then it's their card. And now you're going to force that card. So you're going to take the cards into glide position, turn your hand face down, and you're going to take that, deal that card, and you're going to glide their card and keep dealing. And now you go, just say stop wherever you want. And once they say stop, you take their card and you go, okay, you stopped me right here. You could have stopped anywhere, but you stopped at exactly your card. So that's the basic plot. Now I'm gonna go through the different uh, possibilities because this trick has multiple outs, you could say. So there are some a couple of things you need to keep track of, okay? If, if their card is on position six or seven, then you'll have a great trick. I'll show you what I mean. So their card, this is our key card. And so that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so their card is on position six. We do the exact same thing that is cut into the middle, like I showed you before. You find the key card, the, the queen of hearts. You go uh, one, two, three, four, five. And you see what happened there. You cut that to the bottom. You don't know this right now, but when you ask them, okay, so what was your card or what position was your card on? And they say six, you know that their card is on the bottom. So all you have to do in that scenario is you just turn the deck over and you have 
a killer trick. Okay, let's say their card is on position seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The exact same thing. Cut into the middle. Find the key card, go one, two, three, four, five to the right. And you cut that at that point. And now you have their card on top. So that's another little miracle. So six or seven is great positions. Okay, so let's say their card falls on somewhere between one and five, which I explained a little bit earlier. So it's in this case, it's one, two, three, four. Now the exact same thing, of course, cut into the middle. You find the key card, go one, two, three, four, five, and you cut to the bottom. Now you ask what position was your card on? They go four. So I, as I said, I like to, to take six minus four, that's two. So I know that we have two cards and then their selection. So what I do is once again, I force that card in this case using the glide. So I go, I just start dealing one, two, and once I've dealt two, I go, okay, stop me wherever you want, you know, and I keep dealing and they can stop me whenever they want. And you take the glided card, which is their selection. Okay, so let's say their card falls somewhere above seven, okay, which happened in the presentation. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So their card is on position eleven. Same thing, you cut it into the middle, you find your key card, and you go one, two, three, four, five, and you cut that at that point. So now you can go, you, you have six, so you continue from six, and you, you ask them, what's your number? They say eleven. So you go six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and that will be their cards. Of course, you could also take the position of their cards, uh, their cards, so 11, and you take minus six. So in this case, that would be five. And you just go, hmm, I got a feeling that your card is, hmm, yeah, five from the top. So one, two, three, four, five. And that would be their card. Or you could do as I did, you know, spread it and kind of, yeah, do a little performance, a little acting, or you get, you know, you get a feeling and then you count in your head and yeah, you get to their card. So you can be a little bit creative there. Let's say your name has five letters in it. You can spell out your name, for example, or the name of the card. Uh, if it's on third place, you could spell out a, C, E, and you'd get to the A's, for example. Now, another super cool way you could do it is let's say you know that their card is on position five from the top, and you give the deck to them to deal, and they just start dealing, and you count silently in your head to five, and you say, stop. And they stop here, and you say, so what was your card? And they say there's a space, and yeah. And of course, you could do this from the bottom as well. If you know it's on the third position, for example, you can say, just uh, just deal the cards. And they start dealing. And now you say, stop, right in midair, you know. I felt a little tingling right there. What was your card? And they're gonna go, uh, yeah, it's this one, Ace of Spades. So that's another super cool method. There's so many different ways you could do this. Now, make sure to, uh, to practice all these different scenarios. Uh, and, and, you know, get those these formulas down so you can do it on the fly in performance. Uh, because this is super, super clean. Because, as I said, they just, you know, they just look at the card. They don't even take it out. And then they shuffle the cards. And then they shuffle the rest of the cards. And they put their shuffled pile into the shuffled deck. And, you know, it's it's just super clean. And yet you can locate the card, which is like pure magic. So this is the magic of the key card. Never underestimate the key card principle. So if you like this, please leave a like down below. Please subscribe. It would really help me out. We'll keep going through the Royal Road to Card Magic. It's a super cool book. And thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.